Hey everyone, welcome to part 100 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are at part 100. So this has been an amazing journey. I think starting the series is one of the best decisions of my life because of the impact it had on others. I got lots of feedback from people on how the series helped them learn game programming, start their dream game, and even land jobs in the game industry. These feedbacks are my biggest motivation and it makes the effort put into recording and editing these videos totally worth it. So I just want to say a huge thanks to everyone who has been watching and supporting the series and a special thanks to anyone who has supported the series on Patreon even if it was for a single month. Honestly, I wouldn't be able to reach part 100 without the support of you guys. My original plan was to create a 15 to 20 part series but you guys made this possible. So once again, thanks to all of you from the bottom of my heart. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. So in today's video, we'll be improving our cutscene system. We'll add more cutscene actions and improve our custom editor so that it looks like this. And we'll also add features like undo and redo to our custom editor. So let's look at how to implement this. So right now we have a pretty decent cutscene system with the custom inspector. But there are some issues that we need to fix in the custom inspector. So let me show you the issues first. So if I add a cutscene action by pressing one of these buttons, and then if I press Ctrl Z to undo, you can see that it's actually undoing the selection and not the add action, right? So the turn actor action is still there after we try to undo. So undo won't work for actions that are added from our custom inspector. And then the second issue is that when we add an action from the custom inspector, Unity doesn't mark the scene as dirty. Okay, so usually when we make any changes in the scene, you'll see an asterisk over here. So this is because Unity is marking the scene as dirty. So now when we try to go to a different scene, we will be prompted to save the current scene because it's dirty. Right, but the issue is when we add an action through our custom editor, Unity doesn't mark the scene as dirty. So now if we just go to a different scene, then this change won't be saved. All right, so we need to fix these two issues. And by the way, let me just remove the two actions that I added right now. We don't need them, okay. So we need to fix the undo issue and the issue where the scene is not marked as dirty. So whenever we make a change to an object from an editor script, we have to record that change, okay. If we don't record it, then undo won't work and the scene won't be marked as dirty. So let's look at how to record the change. So here, from the cutscene editor, when we add a new action to our cutscene, we have to record this change. So how can we do that? We can do that by using a function from the undo class. And by the way, to use the undo class, we have to import the unity editor namespace all right and now we have to use the undo class to record this object before we make the change so here we can do that by using two functions we can either use undo dot record object or we can use undo dot register complete object undo okay so register complete object undo function will store the copy of the entire object on the undo stack so this is what we want to use instead of the record object function because if we just use the record object function then when we redo an undo action it will only restore the action to the list but it won't restore the values of the action but if we use register complete object undo then it will also restore the values of the action so this is what we want to use so to this function first we have to pass the object to undo so the object is this object and then we have to give a name for the action. So we can give something like add action to cutscene. Okay. So now if you go to Unity and try adding an action from the editor, you should be able to undo that change by pressing Ctrl Z. All right. And you can also redo it by pressing Ctrl Y. Okay. So that is working. And over here, you can also see that the scene was marked as dirty when we added the cutscene action. All right, so this function will do both. It'll record the object for undo and it'll also mark the scene as dirty, okay? 
and by the way you can also undo by going to edit and selecting undo add action to cutscene so this is that text that will be shown here okay so this line will fix those two issues for us but there is one problem the cutscene script is not an editor script right it's a normal mono behavior script that will be attached to one of our game objects so the problem is from these scripts we can't use a class that belongs to the unity editor all right the unity editor namespace will not be included when we build the game it will only be there when we are running the game from the editor okay so this line will cause an error when we try to build the game let me actually try building the game and show you the error all right let me just save the change all right so here in the console as you can see that the build failed with this error that says the name undo does not exist in the current context so that is the issue you won't be able to use any classes inside the editor namespace in your gameplay scripts you'll only be able to use them inside editor scripts like this okay so to fix this what we can do is we can avoid compiling this line if we are not running the game from the editor okay so to do that we can use something called a preprocessor directive in c sharp so i can just type ash if and then unity editor and at the end of this line i can type ash and if okay so what this will do is this will only compile this line if we are in the editor and it won't try to compile this line when we are trying to build the game okay so you can read more about directives from unity's documentation so this will allow us to include or exclude some code from the compilation and you have like lots of different options here other than unity editor all right but this will do the job for us so now if you build the game it should run without any errors and we also have undo working in our cutscene inspector okay so next let's go ahead and add more actions to our cutscene system so let me open the cutscenes folder and first i'll add actions to enable and disable game objects so that's something common that you'll have to do in cutscenes so let me go ahead and create that i'll call this enable object action all right and then i'll also create another one called disable object action okay so here i'll get rid of the default code and i'll make it inherit the cutscene action class and in this class we need a variable to store the game object that we should enable right so i'll create a serialized field variable of type game object and next we can just override the play function and from the play function we can just enable the game object by calling set active true okay and i'll also add a yield break at the end so that we don't have any error in the code routine definition okay so let me just copy this and implement the disable object action next okay so we also have to make it inherit from the cutscene action and in this case we want to disable the object so i'll pass false to the set active function okay so now we have actions to enable and disable game objects during a cutscene so next another common thing that we might want to do during a cutscene is starting and ending quests and pcs giving items to the player and all that but right now we only have the dialogue action and we won't be able to do anything like that from the dialogue right so in the npc controller in the interact action we already have a code for doing things like 
giving an item giving a pokemon starting a quest finishing a quest and all that so if we just create a cutscene action for calling the npc interact function we'll be able to use all these functionalities from it okay so let me create a new script called npc interact action all right and let me get rid of the default code and let me make it inherit the cutscene action class so in this class we need a variable to store the npc with which we should interact so i'll just create a variable called npc and then i'll overwrite the play function and from the play function i'll just call npc dot interact function okay so here for the initiator i'll pass player controller dot transform okay and finally i'll also add a yield return at the start so that we will wait for the interaction to complete okay so with this action we'll be able to do things like starting a quest giving items to the player and all that and by the way in your game in case you want to start a quest in some other way other than through an npc then you can create another action for that but for a simple game like this where all the quests are given through an npc this is fine so next i want to create actions to fade in and fade out the screen so it's a really common thing that you see in cutscenes so let's go ahead and create two actions for those so first i'll create the fade in action and then i'll create the fade out action okay so let me open it up and i'll get rid of the default code and i'll make it inherit the cutscene action class so in here we just need one variable which will be the duration of the fade in action so i'll just create a float variable called duration and then from the play function we can do the fade in action by calling fader dot i dot fade in okay and let me also add a yield return at the start so next let me just copy this and create the fade out action okay so here we should call fade out instead of fade in and you also have to make it inherit the cutscene action class all right so now we have all these actions so next we have to create a button for each action so that we can add these action to the cutscene right so if we add all these buttons one by one then our cutscene inspector won't look that good because it's going to have lots of button at the start okay so we can improve the ui by aligning two or three buttons horizontally in the inspector so if you want to align an item horizontally then you can use gui layout dot horizontal scope okay so we assign it to a variable called scope and we have to use a using statement and we have to wrap our scope inside the using statement okay so let's say we want three items to be aligned horizontally so we can put the first three buttons in block of the using statement okay and by the way here i have to add the new keyword because this is a constructor all right and let me just change this else if to if so that we don't have an error okay so now these three buttons should be aligned horizontally because they are inside the horizontal scope so let's go to unity and see how it looks okay so here you can see that the buttons are aligned horizontally but i don't want the button to have a long text like this 
so what we can do is instead of naming the button add dialog action we can just name it dialog okay and here i'll just name it move actor instead of add move actor action and i'll do the same for all the other actions all right that looks much better so next let's add buttons for rest of the actions so first i'll add a button for enable object action okay and then i'll add one for the disable object action okay and i'll put these three in a horizontal scope all right and finally i'll create buttons for the npc interact fade in and fade out actions so first let me create a button for the npc interact and next let me create a button for the fade in action And finally, I'll create a button for the fade out action. All right. So now if we go to Unity, we should have a button for all the actions. Okay. So yeah, that looks pretty good than having all the buttons vertically. All right. So we can also try adding some actions. And by the way, we can set a default value for the duration of the fade in and fade out actions so that the user won't have to type in the duration every time all right so i'm not going to test all these actions in this video because that's going to take some time but let's actually try testing the fade in and fade out action just to make sure that everything's working fine and by the way, we don't need this turn actor action in the cutscene. So we can remove that. That was just something that I added while testing the undo. Okay, so now we can try testing the fade in and fade out action. So I'll go to the gameplay scene and run the game. So yeah, it's working fine. So now we are pretty much done with our cutscene system. So you can go ahead and add more actions that you want in your game. But I'll be stopping here and I'll be moving on to the next feature. So yeah, I'll stop the video here. Once again, I want to thank everyone who has been watching, supporting the series and helping me reach part 100. I really hope you're finding the series helpful. I have a lot more stuff planned for the future, so stay tuned for that.